The Cataraqui Source Protection Authority and others are responsible to implement the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan. The plan includes policies to regulate drinking water threats across the source protection area. All policies in the plan are intended to fill gaps in the existing water protection framework. Source protection plans have legal effect on municipalities, the province, local boards, i.e. health units, and source protection authorities. Some other bodies are named in policies included in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan, but they are not legally bound to act. A variety of management tools are used in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan, including education and outreach, stewardship programs, and best management practices. This slide illustrates the available management options from least to most regulatory. Prohibition, risk management plans, and the related restricted land use tools are new tools under Part 4 of the Clean Water Act. They are only used when no other options are feasible. For example, land use planning cannot be directly applied to an activity such as pasturing and grazing. The second part of this presentation will explain more about Part 4. Permits and licenses or environmental compliance approvals through provincial ministries apply to some activities such as waste disposal sites and sewage works. The Clean Water Act requires that these prescribed instruments comply with significant threat policies and have regard for those policies addressing moderate and low drinking water threats in source protection plans. Similar to environmental compliance approvals, land use planning policies are either comply with or have regard for depending on whether it is addressing a significant or a moderate or low drinking water threat. The balance of the tools are used as appropriate. They generally address moderate or low drinking water threats or complement other more regulatory policies. However, in the limited circumstances where they are used to address a significant drinking water threat, it is necessary for the body identified to comply. Information on these types of policies can be found in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan Primer, the cleanwatercataraqui.ca website, or the Source Protection Plan itself. Policies in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan include implementation deadlines. These range for immediately following the April 1, 2015 effective date to up to 10 years following the effective date. Both Part 4 and Land Use Planning policies are immediately effective on April 1, 2015. Generally speaking, operational policies are to be implemented up to two years following the effective date. Document updates are required or recommended from two to five years following the effective date, and research initiatives are between five and ten years following the effective date. There are many resources available to you for more information about source protection in the Cataraqui Source Protection Area. The Cataraqui Source Protection Plan can be found on the Clean Water Cataraqui website. On the resources page, you will also be able to reference the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan Primer and Quick Facts for Municipalities. The Cataraqui Source Protection Plan presents policies per vulnerable area. This means that obligations or recommendations for your municipality will appear in more than one chapter. To provide the plan content in a format that is easier to reference, an interactive tool is available on the website. They are a one-stop shop for municipal staff and residents. These maps are simply clickable images that present all applicable policies and supporting information in a single fact sheet. The maps are accessed on the resources page of the Clean Water Cataraqui website. These resources are all available through the Clean Water Cataraqui website. Any questions about source protection can be directed to these staff. At the end of Part 2 of the presentation, you will be able to screen development applications for activities that fall under Part 4 policies. You will be able to explain Part 4 rights and responsibilities to coworkers, development proponents, and the general public. You will also know where to find additional resources. This part of the presentation will focus on the most restrictive policies in the Source Protection Plan, known as Part 4 Policies from the Clean Water Act. These policies address significant drinking water threats. Part 4 of the Clean Water Act provides municipalities with new tools to regulate existing and future activities that are significant drinking water threats. Part 4 policies are intended to address the gaps where significant drinking water threats cannot be addressed 
by existing planning tools or regulatory instruments, or where land use planning isn't an option because the drinking water threat is clearly an activity instead of a land use and or it wouldn't be necessary to obtain a planning approval before undertaking the activity. Land use planning authorities must comply with policies under Part 4 of the Clean Water Act. The purpose of Part 4 policies are to ensure that existing activities cease to be a significant drinking water threat and that future activities never become a significant drinking water threat. For more information on Part 4 of the Clean Water Act and Part 4 policies in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan, please refer to the Cataraqui Source Protection Part 4 Primer, which was developed by CRCA staff and can be found under resources on the cleanwatercataraqui.ca website. Part 4 policies only apply to the three wellhead protection areas and three of the intake protection zones with significant drinking water threats. This includes Sydenham Intake Protection Zone, Cana Wellhead Protection Area in Kingston Mills, James W. King Intake Protection Zone in Gananoque, Lansdowne Wellhead Protection Area, Miller Manor Wellhead Protection Area in Mallorytown, and the Brockville Intake Protection Zone. The James W. King Water Treatment Plant in the town of Gananoque draws water from the St. Lawrence River. The water is treated and distributed to the 5,200 residents and businesses in Gananoque. The majority of the James W. King Intake Protection Zone consists of the St. Lawrence River. On land, the Intake Protection Zone mainly consists of urban and island residential properties. It also includes farmland, the James W. King Water Treatment Plant, open spaces, marinas and docking facilities, and the Gananoque Downtown Core, which has a variety of professional and retail land uses. Part 4 policies apply primarily to the red area and in the blue area to a lesser extent. Part 4 of the Clean Water Act includes three types of policies that apply only to significant drinking water threats. The types of policies are highlighted here and will be explained in more detail during this presentation. A Part 4 primer for the Cataraqui Source Protection Area has been developed and is available on the Clean Water Cataraqui website. On this slide, the image of the Cataraqui Part 4 Primer is a hyperlink to where the primer is posted on the website. Please feel free to explore the primer to enhance your understanding of Part 4. Part 4 policies are the responsibility of the municipality where the policies apply. The Clean Water Act permits a municipality to maintain their responsibility or to transfer it to another body such as the Source Protection Authority. Within the Cataraqui Source Protection Area, Six of the seven municipalities where Part 4 policies apply have entered into agreements to transfer enforcement responsibility to the Cataraqui Source Protection Authority. It is necessary for the body that has Part 4 enforcement responsibility to establish a risk management office. This means that there must be people and procedures in place to enable implementation of Part 4 policies. People who have successfully completed the required provincial training must be appointed to act as risk management officials and inspectors to enforce the Part 4 policies. For more information, you can reference the Related Implementation Guide, which is available on the Clean Water Cataraqui website. On this slide, Module 1, Establishing a Risk Management Office, is a hyperlink to the relevant implementation guide developed by Conservation Ontario. Part 4 prohibition is used sparingly in the Cataraqui Source Protection Plan. The Cataraqui Source Protection Committee did not find any existing activities that required prohibition, so only future activities are prohibited from becoming established. As was mentioned previously, Part 4 policies are used to fill gaps where no other management tool is feasible. The prohibited activities have no requirements for environmental compliance approvals through provincial ministries, and neither is there a requirement for any land use planning type approvals. Therefore, it was found to be necessary to manage these activities of concern through Part 4 policies. The Source Protection Committee also determined that for some activities, it would not make sense to establish them in the areas of concern and would be better located elsewhere. For example, livestock grazing and pasturing may be classified as a significant drinking water threat and prohibited near an intake or a wellhead protection area. However, 
This activity would not be consistent with current development patterns and is unlikely to occur, even if it was not prohibited in the Source Protection Plan. Therefore, the impacts of prohibited policies in the Cattaraq Resource Protection Area are likely to be minimal. Please note that the Module 6 prohibition image on this slide is a hyperlink to the relevant implementation resource guide developed by Conservation Ontario. The image displayed on this slide is the interface for the interactive maps. The yellow arrow points to Intake Protection Zone 1, which is a set distance from the end of the intake pipe located in the St. Lawrence River for the James W. King Intake Protection Zone. Intake Protection Zone 1 is highlighted on this slide. The activity is prohibited from becoming established in the future as per Policy 7.5.3 in the Cataract Resource Protection Plan include the application of agricultural source material to land, the management of runoff that contains chemicals used in the de-icing of aircraft, the use of land for livestock grazing or pasturing, an outdoor confinement area or farm animal yard, the handling and storage of more than 2,500 kilograms or liters of pesticide containing MCPA or mecoprop at a facility where it is sold or used for application at other sites, except where it is manufactured or processed, the storage of agricultural source material, the handling and storage of more than 5,000 tons of road salt in a manner that may result in its exposure to precipitation, runoff from precipitation or snowmelt, at or above grade snow storage that is more than one hectare. Section 58 of the Clean Water Act relates to risk management plans. A risk management plan is an agreement about how to conduct an activity on a specific property. For more information on risk management plans, you can reference the related implementation guide also available on the Clean Water Cataraqui website. Please note that the Module 5 Risk Management Plans image on this slide is a hyperlink to the relevant implementation resource guide developed by Conservation Ontario. Risk management plans are negotiated between a risk management official and the person undertaking the activity of concern. The benefit of a risk management plan is that it allows certain activities to continue to occur on a specific area of land as long as the risk management plan is followed. It is a mechanism to officially recognize the beneficial practices already in place that reduce the risk to the drinking water source and to require any necessary additional measures. When the activity is conducted in a manner consistent with the risk management plan, the risk to the drinking water source is viewed as no longer significant. In order to ensure the measures are implemented as intended, the risk management plans also include monitoring and reporting aspects as necessary. The Cataract Resource Protection Plan requires that risk management plans for existing activities are all in place by April 1, 2017. Risk management plans can be simple or complex depending on the activity and its threat to the drinking water source. In some cases, only a portion of the property falls within the vulnerable area, so any requirement for a risk management plan would only apply to that portion of the property. Risk management officials in the Cataract Resource Protection Area will use standard forms to collect information and write risk management plans. In James W. King Intake Protection Zone 1, certain activities require the establishment of a risk management plan. Intake Protection Zone 1 is indicated by the yellow arrow and is highlighted on this slide. Policy 7.5.2 in the Cataract Resource Protection Plan requires risk management plans for the storage of hazardous waste at disposal sites in James W. King Intake Protection Zone 1. The required minimum risk management plan content includes consideration of the suitability of the storage container, the repair and or replacement of defective or unsuitable storage equipment, staff training, and collection of waste materials by a licensed and qualified hazardous waste collector. In James W. King Intake Protection Zone 2, certain activities require the establishment of a risk management plan. Intake Protection Zone 2 is indicated by the blue arrow and is highlighted on this slide. Policy 7.5.1 in the Cataract Resource Protection Plan requires risk management plans in James W. King Intake Protection Zone 2 for the following activities. The application of agricultural source material to land, the use of land as livestock grazing or pasturing, an outdoor confinement area or a farm animal yard, the storage of agricultural source material. The risk management plan should be consistent with regulations and agriculture best management practices and recognize existing best management practices.